Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Knowlton, a professor in the Department of Dairy Science at Virginia Tech. We're creating a sequence of short recordings covering the basics of judging dairy cattle. This module focuses on feet and legs. If you've had any experience with dairy judging, you're familiar with the Unified Scorecard created and updated by the Purebred Dairy Cattle Association. This is the key source material, and the relative weights assigned to different traits is based on scientific research. Feet and legs is the third most important type trait when selecting for profitable cattle. And within this category, specific traits are assigned varying weights according to their importance. In this module, I'm going to teach you how to evaluate whether a cow has functional feet and legs. But before we start, let me show you what it should look like. This is a beautiful Holstein cow at the Royal Winter Fair. And just watch the way she walks. Structurally, her legs are about perfect. And she walks just smoothly and beautifully. This is what we hope for. The system we teach at Virginia Tech is based on the PDCA scorecard, but modified a bit to facilitate sorting of cows or grouping. We've got to first get the good cows sorted from the bad cows, and we do that by focusing on big picture priorities. If you've watched our presentation on udders and dairiness, you've seen this mantra, good udder dairy cows with functional feet and legs. As we're evaluating a cow, the first thing we zoom in on is her udder, then dairiness. And then I'm looking at feet and legs, and I'm looking for functional feet and legs. To evaluate whether a cow's feet and legs are functional, I ask myself these three things. How are her hocks? What about her feet? And can she walk? I don't necessarily mean that literally. Presumably, if you're judging her, she can physically walk. But what I'm looking for really is mobility and how easily she walks. So hocks, feet, can she walk? As I'm looking at her hocks and her feet and how well she walks, I'm using the same system I use for udders and dairiness. The potential answers to those questions are yes, no, or I'd like to find better, but I can live with it if I have to. So let me talk about each of these. A cow is a yes on legs if there are no major problems, but I do need to tell you about the one fault rule. In my world, a cow can have one minor fault in her feet and legs, and she can still be a yes on feet and legs. As long as it's not a major problem, one fault, she can still be a good-legged cow. Then the next category is, I'd like to find better, but I can live with it if I have to. And what I mean by that is a cow that has two or three minor problems, uh, weak pasterns in an older cow, hock with a little too much set, a little bit of hock in, something that I don't really like, I'd like to find better, but... I can live with it if I have to, she's still functional. And then no is major problems with the legs, either something that's clearly affecting her mobility or multiple faults in her legs. So let's go through my three questions. The first one, remember, is how are her hocks? And I'm looking for several things here. The first thing we'll talk about is the set to the leg from the side view. I have the three sketches there from the linear scorecard that show the extremes, and what we want here is the intermediate. We want not too much set and not too straight. Both cows that I have in this picture have far too much set to their hock. So this is a bit of the Goldilocks trait. We want it not too hot and not too cold, just right. Usually if an animal has too much set to her hock, it's pretty obvious, and this is a calf from the Virginia Tech dairy that I'll use to demonstrate. She's a nice calf in a lot of ways, but she's got way too much set to her hock. Watch the way she walks. I think it's pretty easy to tell when a cow has too much set to her hock. A crooked-legged cow is easy for most kids to see. Sometimes my students have trouble determining whether a straight-legged cow truly is too straight in her hocks. Sometimes we overreact to this, and I'm not saying that straight legs are okay, because they're not. They'll take the cow out of the herd pretty quickly. But legs that are truly too straight aren't very common anymore. I tell my students to ask themselves three things. The first is, does she have a puffy hock? If a cow's leg is truly too straight, oftentimes she'll develop some swelling around it because she just doesn't have that shock absorber of being able to bend her hock. The other is, does she have weak pasterns? Again, a cow whose legs are truly too straight, her legs are going to give somewhere and you're going to start to see soft pasterns. So those are two warning signs that are going to tell me that maybe I need to be worried about this cow's legs being too straight. But the most important test, and this is one where you've got to be live and you've got to be able to see a move, is can she bend it? If I see a cow whose leg is on the straight side, but I see no puffiness, her pasterns are fine, and when she walks, she can bend them, I'm not worried about a leg being too straight. As long as they don't bother her, they don't bother me. 
I've pulled a clip of a really nice Swiss calf at World Dairy Expo a few years ago to give you an example of a calf whose legs might structurally look a little straight when you look at her from the side. But watch this calf walk. She bends her hocks with no problems. I'm not worried about this calf's legs being too straight. This is a good-legged calf. As I said, when I'm looking at the side view of a cow's legs, when I'm looking at her hocks, there are several traits I'm concerned about. Let's talk about this next one. When a cow's legs are too far behind her, this is one that I struggled to see when I was learning to judge. Then someone uh, pointed out that it's when a cow looks like a German Shepherd. Maybe this rule doesn't resonate with you or doesn't help you, but it helps me. If you look at that German Shepherd and almost all German Shepherds, that's just the way they're built. Their legs are behind them all the time. If you see that, that is when a cow's legs are too far behind her. So the next trait that I look at when I'm trying to decide if a cow has functional feet and legs are her feet. I use that term to mean everything from the dew claws on down. So when I say, has a cow got good feet, what I'm looking at are her pasterns, the depth of her heel, and her foot angle. These are three different traits. They're often correlated. Often a cow with a shallow heel will also have a very low foot angle, but they are three different traits. So it can be tricky to evaluate feet. Let me walk through each of the three things that I'm looking for here with some photos. The cow on the right is a cow whose feet I just really admire. I got to see her in Wisconsin last winter. Let's look first at her pasterns. Pasterns are obviously between the hoof and the dew claw. She is very strong. She is upright. She is straight in her pasterns. All of those are good things. On the left is a really pretty Holstein calf, but I'll tell you what, for a calf, those pasterns are kind of weak, and I worry about it in a calf. Next, let's talk about foot angle. And to be clear, with foot angle, we're looking at the angle from the, on the front of the foot. The sketches from the linear scorecard give us a nice uh, example of a cow that has got a very steep foot angle all the way over to a cow with a very low foot angle. And again, this, this cow whose feet I was so taken with that I stopped and took a picture of him has got a really ideal foot angle. I think the most difficult trait to evaluate when you're looking at feet is depth of heel. It's kind of subtle. The depth of heel is literally the amount of hoof between the hairline and the ground. So my favorite cow there on the right has got great depth of heel. There's a lot of hoof there at the back of her foot. Do you see that? On the other hand, the calf on the left has a very shallow heel. Do you see how her hairline almost runs straight down to the ground? There's just no heel there at the back of her foot. This heifer also has a very shallow foot angle. As I said, those two traits tend to be correlated, although they're not always correlated. When you're judging, just know that a really shallow heel is, is not all that common. So it's not something that needs to be coming out in every set of reasons because it doesn't happen in every class. So back to our three cows. The shorthorn has weak pasterns and a very low foot angle. She's worse actually in her left rear foot than her right rear foot. And yes, that can happen. I judge them on the worst foot. The Holstein's got all three. She's got a low foot angle. She's got a shallow heel. She has weak pasterns. She also has puffy pasterns, which I'd mentioned in my reasons. I'll bet she doesn't walk very well. The Jersey's got good depth of heel and her foot angle's decent. It's just that she's got a little bit of soft pasterns. So we've talked about hocks and we've talked about pasterns. Clearly a cow can have problems in both places. And sometimes my students will ask me, how can you tell which it is? Is it a too much set to her hock or is it bad pasterns? The answer is pretty simple. Just almost physically block off one and then the other. So put your hand between your eyes and her pastern so you can't see the pasterns and evaluate her hock. I'm looking at the Swiss and I say, yeah, she's got too much set to her hock. Then put your hand over her hocks, so you can't see the hocks and look at her pasterns. And I'm going to say, yeah, she's got soft pasterns. So just literally block off one piece and look at the other piece. That's going to help you distinguish whether it's one or the other or both. So still looking at hocks, there's another thing that can be wrong with a cow's hocks, and that is if she hocks in. Here I've got the sketch from the linear scoring guide that shows the extremes really nicely. We want a cow to track straight. The four pictures I have here are cows who hock in to varying degrees. The one on the left is probably the least severe, but the Guernsey and then the two Holsteins hock in quite a lot. This is something that's really gonna affect the way she walks, and if it's that severe, I'm gonna criticize her for it. Moving on, you remember that I'm looking at three things to determine if this cow has functional feet and legs. I'm looking at her hocks, I'm looking at her feet, and then most important, I'm asking myself, can she walk? What I really mean by that is, can she walk smoothly, easily? Does she move freely? Does she move without any drama? If there's drama, then she's got problems. 
So what's drama? Drama is when you notice something wrong when she walks along like this Igor limp. Sometimes old cows, they just get a hitch in their get along and, and they just walk with drama. And that isn't what you want. I showed you that nice Holstein earlier who walks so well. And, and here I've got a video clip of an Ayrshire cow at Madison again, who just walks smoothly. So let me show you some examples of cows that have structural problems that are leading to drama when they walk. I've got a Guernsey cow, a Holstein cow, and an Ayrshire cow that uh, there's just a lot wrong. There's just drama. And so that's going to make me stop and look and figure out what's wrong. We're getting down toward the end. I've shown you a lot of things that you should worry about when you're judging feet and legs. Let me show you a few things that you don't really have to worry about. The first is soft pasterns in an older cow. I told you earlier that soft pasterns in a calf or a young cow, that really bothers me. But as a good cow ages, her pasterns are going to get softer. She's carrying around a lot of weight. Every time she calves, she mobilizes calcium from her bones. As time goes on, the pasterns are going to get soft. And in an older cow, it doesn't bother me. So what's the break point? When do you say she's old enough that I'm going to forgive her some soft pasterns? For me, it's the four-year-old class. At four years old, they've probably calved three times. And at that point, I'm going to start to cut them a little bit of slack for soft pasterns. Here's a video clip of just a gorgeous older cow. She's an aged cow in this video, and as you watch her walk, yeah, she's a little squishy on her pasterns. But you know what? It doesn't really affect the way she walks, and if it doesn't bother her, it doesn't bother me. On the other hand, in this next clip, some of these Ayrshires, this is a three-year-old cow class, and these cows are, are too soft on their pasterns for young cows. One more thing to watch out for is, as you're watching a cow walk and you see problems, Stop for a minute and look and decide, is she walking funny because she wants to or because she has to? My point here is that cows have temper tantrums just like little kids do. If a cow's having a temper tantrum, you need to kind of stop and let her work it out and then look again and figure out if it's a structural thing or if it's just a behavioral thing. Along the same lines, if it's cold and you're judging calves and heifers, and you see him maybe roach up and walk a little stiffly like this nice Holstein calf is, stop for a minute and figure out, is it structural or is it just because she's cold? As you watch this calf walk, she actually does bend her hocks. There's nothing wrong with this calf except that this film was taken in Minnesota in the dead of winter. Nothing wrong with Minnesota, but it'll make a calf kind of hunch up and walk a little funny. So that's your job as a judge is, is just to figure that out. That's a lot of information, and judging feet and legs is a little bit complicated. It'll take you a while to get good at this. Let me talk about how to work this into the system. You know we have this mantra, we're looking for good other dairy cows with functional feet and legs. Within feet and legs, as with the other two categories, the possible answers are yes, no, and I'd like to find better, but I can live with it if I have to. Here are some examples of cows where I'm going to say yes on legs and not have any hesitation at all. The Holstein, the Ayrshire, the Guernsey, the Swiss, these are just really good-legged cows. Hawks, feet, can she walk? Well, they're pictures, but I'm going to assume they can walk because everything else looks good. I would look at these cows and say yes on legs, no hesitation. These can be top group cows. If they are good utter dairy cows and then they are yes on functional feet and legs, these are the cows I want to win with. I've shown you plenty of examples of no, so let me go to the more difficult category. And these are cows that I'd like to find better, but I can live with it if I have to. Remember, this is in the big picture of sorting cows. I'm looking for good utter dairy cows with functional feet and legs. They don't have to be perfect, just functional. And the four cows on this page, I would say they're functional in their feet and legs. The Jersey, yeah, she's a little soft on her pasterns. Same with the Holstein. The Ayrshire's got a little bit too much set to her hawk. They're a little bit behind her. I'd like to find better, but I can live with it if I have to. The Guernsey cow, there might be some room for disagreement on, but to me, this cow's legs are underneath her. The set to her hock is fine. She's quite weak on her pasterns, but if you zoom in, the depth of heel is all right. So for me, this is a cow who's got one fault that I'd really like to find better, but she's a good uttered cow and she's awfully dairy. This is a cow that I can live with if I have to. Please understand me. I am critical of this Guernsey's feet and legs. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see her walk. If she walks all right, this is a cow whose legs I can live with if I have to. I'm talking about sorting the class. She's a good utter dairy cow whose legs I can live with. 
if you have more than one good udder dairy cow in the class, awesome. Within that group of good udder dairy cows, place them on legs and put this cow second or even third because of her legs. What you don't want to do though is fall in hate with those feet and put her last. If you're going to put a cow over this cow, make sure that the other cow is also a good udder dairy cow who is better on her feet and legs. Don't put a fat cow over this cow. Don't put a bad uttered cow over this cow. Remember your big picture priorities, good udder dairy cows, functional feet and legs. So if you've watched our other videos, you know that I'm a big believer in mantras. These are things that you recite to yourself to keep your priorities in order, to keep your focus on the right things. Good udder dairy cows with functional feet and legs is a mantra that I preach. Within feet and legs, here's my mantra. Hawks, feet, can she walk? Hawks, feet, can she walk? Hawks, feet, can she walk? Hawks, feet, can this cow walk? I hope that this presentation has been useful to you and that you'll go to our YouTube channel and watch some of the others that we're posting. But now let me stop and do some thank yous. Thank you first to the Virginia Tech Dairy Science students who are helping me put this series together. They are Carol Wolhusian, Chelsea Abbott, and Hannah Van Dyke. Thank you to Dr. Mike Barnes, the longtime coach of the Virginia Tech dairy judging team who originated the system we're teaching here. Hordes Dairyman has been super helpful providing all of the photos that we're using and giving good feedback on these. Finally, let's always remember to thank dairy farmers across the country who support and host judging practices for your judging team and ours.